Okay, off we go. Now I've sped this up a little bit because I had to try and fit it into the requirements for YouTube, but bear with me. And I did draw it out first, just a rough outline in my 2B pencil. And I started on the right hand side and my plan is to work across the painting from this side. And I'm going to work in sections as you'll see. Uh, I think it's easier. And notice how much of the white paper I am leaving. Some of that will be depleted later on as, a, as the painting progresses, but I really like to leave those whites. I think it keeps the colors sparkling. Um, my colors were in the introduction, which was the first little video before this one. And I hope you watched it because it tells you the brushes I'm using and the colors. Um, I'm using my dagger brush right now, which I just love. Sometimes they're called a striper, um, but they're a, a wonderful brush that you do not have much control over, which I like because it makes the mark more random and much more exciting for me. So as I gradually work up to my darks, I'm very tentative about putting too much dark in at this stage. And I want to try and keep this painting too more of a high key painting so um, uh, as the brush dances across it's mostly using my bright cheery colors and occasionally I'll mix a little bit of burnt sienna with the French ultramarine blue and that makes my dark for me but at this stage I don't need to put too much dark in so here we go with the water and I'm using the French ultramarine and a little tiny bit of the quinacridone coral which is an absolutely divine color and now i'm using my number eight round brush and i use this to just sop up some of the pigment so i get some nice light values within those areas of the water a little bit of the quinacridone uh, coral is worked in now and a little bit of the australian red gold I think it's called fun color mix to work with actually and and I, I liked doing it different for me because I tend to use more cool colors than I do warm but fun fact cool paintings don't sell as well as the warm paintings do so maybe we ought to all paint in warm colors from now on so i switched back to my dagger brush and splattered it's a wonderful brush to splatter paint with because the uh, hairs are so long this is a three-eighths of an inch uh, dagger brush so the hairs are nice and long and floppy and you get paint in the brush and you can flick it and sometimes it goes everywhere but i kind of like it to um, be a very random splotch Anyway, we're getting to the foreground area now and I'm gradually filling in and I'm still leaving lots of the white. I'm about to use my drinking straw now just to blow a little bit of grass-like atmosphere into the foreground. And just very carefully drag some of that colour down into the bottom areas. You don't have to take it all down there. I like to leave a lot of white, a lot of spaces, and later on I can decide what I want to do with them. But if you start filling in those whites too soon, then you might end up with a very flat painting. Now I'm back up to the back line now because the rest of the painting has got to dry. And I'm just getting a row of trees in here. This is a scene in Texas which is a place I've painted quite a bit and I do like the area. It's very typically Texas. And I'm using a mixture of my uh, gold colors with the French ultramarine blue. A little bit of sap green as well, that comes into the equation. And even though you're using complementary colors, you notice I'm not getting mud. And that's really because I'm working wet into dry. And when you're working wet into dry, you've got a lot more control over your paint. And also, I'm working them in sections and leaving a lot of little white patches in between colors. That way, 
the colours that are complementary don't merge together too much. If you're using a very wet into wet technique and using these colours, you could end up in a fairly, fairly dangerous situation. Now just tentatively putting in a little bit of dark, which is the French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and a little bit of the quinacridone coral occasionally with the French ultramarine. And just doing a little line or a dash here and there, I call it the Morse code technique. And the other paint underneath is still damp, so I can allow myself the freedom of letting some of those colors merge just a little bit. It makes it less harsh. Back to doing the water again and using the number eight round brush. And sliding my brush across on the side of my brush as well as on the tip. I do that a lot with all my brushes. And then I just take out, roll a thirsty brush across the paint to give the feeling of some sort of movement within the water. The minute you put a line or a little dot of colour here and there in your painting, that becomes a, a little eye-catching treat for your viewer. So be careful where you put those particular elements. But I'm concentrating some of those dots, or at least more concentrated in dots around the edges of the water, so it gives a little bit more direction. Now this colour is a mixture of the quinacridone coral and French ultramarine and it's, it's going more to the quinacridone coral side so it's a little more purpley and I quite like that but I do take out quite a lot of the colour with my thirsty brush anyway so I get a different value within it. But that colour I would like to peep through, it, it's in the mountain at the background, the hill part at the background so I, I've can allow myself to play with that colour later on, which I do. Just touching up in certain areas now, allowing a little bit of freedom with the warmth of that beautiful quinacridone coral and mixing that with that Australian, I think it's Australian red gold, I can't remember now, but um, mixing those two to colours together make a really nice combination of colour. Going back and touching up the water again and I'm back to using my little round brush because I've got a bit more control over it now. It's difficult to do some of these little areas with the dagger brush because you can't always guide the, uh, the brush into some of the little tight areas. And now I'm reinforcing the background, giving a depth within those clumps of trees. And even with the green mixtures, that sap green with a little bit of French ultramarine, and I'm adding a little bit of the quinacridone coral to those colours so that there's a combination of those colours going through the whole painting. And because I'm, st I'm actually working fairly wet into dry here, I have a little bit more control that the colours don't run and make some muddy uh, messes. But that sap green is a warm green, it's not a cool green. So I'm using warm colours with it and I think that also helps. The dark colour I've used there is really quinacridone coral with the burnt, uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of French ultramarine. So it, it becomes more of a, um, a maroon colour, which I quite like. So I'm now implying one tree clump against another tree clump and that's all done with value and contrast. So don't try and take out all those lovely washes you first put in. They've got to be there so that you've got some depth. But as the trees get closer to the viewer, areas of those trees are going to be darker and also lighter. 
but in my picture my trees are more or less silhouetted so I can afford to be a little bit uh, more adventurous with my darks. Now I'm just infiltrating a little bit of that maroon color again back into the foreground areas, starting to pick it up with the Quinn Coral and my French Ultramarine Blue, just so that those colors have continuity with the rest of the painting. Using my dagger brush and getting some grasses in. And now I've switched to my round brush. I've turned my painting upside down. Now this is key for doing my my skies, especially when the bottom edge of the painting or the, two, the bottom two thirds of the painting is still quite wet. So I'm not pre-wetting the whole sky. I'm just starting with French Ultramarine and a little bit of the Quinacrid and Coral. And I put that down and then feed it out with a directional drag with a wet brush. Now I'm using a dampened paper towel and I use the Viva paper towels because they're nice and soft. And I just sculpt the clouds into that. Now the painting is back to the right way up and I decided I wanted to put one corner a little bit deeper in value than the other. The other in fact has got no paint on it whatsoever. So it's the same mix of colors, the Quinacrid and Coral with the uh, French Ultramarine Blue and the wet tissue. So I'm using my little trowel shaped palette knife and I've got a paper towel in one hand and my knife in the other. And while the paint is at a semi wet stage, I can start slicing some tree trunks into some of those areas. It just gives it a little bit more character. Now that area there I just pointed to is fairly bright. It's a very strong colour, that Quinacrid and Coral by Daniel Smith. So I decide to just pre-dampen it a little bit and blot with my tissue. I might have to do a bit more of that later on because it's fairly strong and it's quite close to the centre of the page. Now some of my little white areas now I can start painting them out and putting a little bit of the other colours within those areas using my palette knife and I'm just chopping into some of those dark areas to imply rocks and giving that area a little bit more depth. Tightening up on some of the major elements, the little linear elements within the painting now with my little rigger brush. This gives me a little bit more control. Dot dot dash dash here and there just play with the surface. If you want the viewer to look at a certain area, then those are the areas that you need to put a little bit more concentration of fun things. Okay, well now I'm going to start putting some of that lovely purpley colour that I put in the foreground. And this is a little blueified, it's not quite so coral coloured, but I am going to take some of that out with a thirsty brush as well. But I'm implying that there's a hill behind this area and it's more distant, so it can be a little bit more blue. It just kind of pushes the trees, the tree line forward. Just taking a little bit of that pigment out with my thirsty brush. Now we're getting to the end of the painting and I am going to use my scrubber on just that uh, coral coloured area and then I'm done. I've signed it and I'm ready for the next painting. I hope you enjoyed this one and please leave a comment and subscribe. Thanks for visiting. See you next time.